So as you know, the topic is why concurrency and don't think that you already know why concurrency because you know, it's used for performance purpose. But wait a minute, I'm going to surprise you in that case. Okay, so let's start the video. So there are basically two reasons for concurrency. First is obviously performance. Okay. But the second is, which is very important is separations of concerns. This we all know, like what performance is and you will share different process with different, different processors. And then every processor act like a beast. Like the more beast you have in your system, the faster it would be one or two. And then you can run multiple applications or even single application can consume many CPUs and then you have many tasks and then you can give these tasks to different, different CPUs so that they will run parallelly. But the important point is they cannot only utilize single CPU. I mean, process one can utilize many CPUs, not only one. So the more CPUs you have, the faster your application or your whole system would perform. This is pretty clear. Like we know from the LKG, UKG, right? Now, what is this separation of concern? This requires more attention. Let's say you have a music player. I am back to the music player again. So this is your music player. You are watching some video. So this is the video part and we have the button sections here, right? And we know this is one process P1. If this single process is having only one thread, which is playing the music or playing the video and responding to the user. Like if user is pressing this play or pause button or next or this menu button or this volume button, then if single thread is handling that, then that thread will have to switch between the user and the video so that it can do both. If it is just single threaded, because your experience is you play a video and then you keep on pressing this and that button and customize everything. So the point is the video playback is T1, let's say, and this whole GUI part is, let's say, T2. And not only that, there is some audio, right? That is T3 and T1 and T3 have to be in sync. So all these things are happening parallelly with different threads. That is why sometimes if you press some button, you see some waiting window or waiting option coming here, right? Some waiting symbol. In that case, this thread is actually communicating to either of these threads and telling that, okay, wait, 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 there is something new coming. Now handle this request or play this video or pause or do something else. So can you see this separation of concern is playing a really very big role here? If GUI part is not handled by T2, if it is just handled by one single thread, then it cannot be so seamless because I'm telling you how a single threaded program would look like. Let's say this piece of code, just single line you assume is taking care of video and this is for audio and this is for GUI. Then they will run this piece of code for video and then they will have to switch to another code to play audio and then they will have to switch to another piece of code to see if user have pressed some button or not. And then they will keep on doing this repeatedly so that they can show us this video. But now it's not like this. This is with some T1, this is with T2 and this is with T3. Now they are running parallelly and that's the reason it's so seamless. That's why, why concurrency is very important because of separation of concerns also. And anything other than these two points, you bring any point that would fall under either of these two. And this is the reason concurrency is very important. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye. Take care.